What's up guys, it's Derek here with another VOD review of Jazz Latte, newly minted rank one North America. Looks like we're going to Shirima. Uh, we'll see. Oh, it's the remover galaxy. Oh, how fun. All right, that will be interesting. Interesting to see. Uh, if you guys don't know, this is the region where you get a magnetic remover on your bench at the start of every round. So it'd be, uh, yeah, that should be very fun. Uh, is going to hold the Malzahar pair to start. Uh, so yeah, uh, I mean... I wanted to watch some more Jazz Latte. He, I mean, it, one one thing that I didn't actually get to talk about in last video, actually. So if you look, Dish Soap uh, is now ranked two North America. He was ranked one North America. Uh, what a beast! <laughs> this guy, um, Dish Soap was ranked one. He's now ranked two, just by a tiny bit because Jazz Latte just climbed up. Um, but something that's crazy. If you look at the games played, Dish Soap has about 300 games played this set, and Jazz Latte has 200 games played. Ooh, Risky Moves is really, really strong if you don't die. Uh, one of the stronger augments uh, at 2-1. Um, curious to see. He doesn't really have amazing... I mean, he can make he can make Static Shiv with his current items. Oh, Blood Money is also really, really good. Okay, a Blood Money opener. Okay. Uh, for you guys who don't know Blood Money, uh, every time you take damage, you get gold. I think it's every 3 HP you lose, you get 1 gold. Um, so... He's gonna play some kind of lost streak opener and then have a bunch of gold. It's uh it's a very, very strong opener. Interesting that um like he could make 10 here if he really wanted to, especially after the blood money, but he's just gonna hold all the pairs. It looks like almost like he doesn't want to play for like lost streak opener. Curious. Because I think if I got this opener, I'd be very tempted to just make uh econ. Ooh, he's holding that Noxus opener again. I think uh Jazz Latte maybe is just uh a Noxus enjoyer, uh, which could make sense. Though so these items for Noxus, I mean it's Half Titans, half BT, half Hodge. It's a forced. Um, but yeah. Okay, he's going to send the Static Shiv. I mean, I think that's the most sensible thing from this spot. You could angle for an Azir comp. You could um, you could still play Kaisa with uh, Static Shiv. It's not BIS, but it's not worst in slot. But yeah, Jazz Latte has about 200 games played, while this show has about 300 games played, and Jazz Latte's higher LP. That, to me, always just shows uh, a player of insane strength if they and be much more efficient with their games, right? They've played many fewer games, but are still the same rank or even higher rank than a comparable player. That that just shows. I mean, you you look at a lot of other players on ladder. We could do... I, I could pull ladder up. Uh, maybe I'll do that on stream uh, later. But, like, you know, you look at the rest of ladder. Many, many people with 300 games played, 400 games played for a lot of people. Tons and tons of games played. Um, not very many people... Uh, I mean, there's no one who has as much LP as Jazz Latte. Uh, with his games played, because he's rank one, obviously. Um, okay, so he made the Static Shiv. Uh, what are we looking for here? Uh, yeah, I, I don't just like Giant Spells here. I think if it's an AP Heavy Lobby, D-Claw's fine. Uh, I think D-Claw's actually great in AP Heavy Lobby, but the, the meta has shifted a little bit where you're not seeing like AP every single game. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, he is actually playing Strongest Board here, not just looking to make as much Econ as possible. This is kind of cool, if you uh, think about it. If you take a loss here, you can make 30, uh, and if you win here, of course, you can make 30. Uh, and he's going to slam items, so it looks like he is playing for streak here with the Noxus, but he, he needs static. I mean, he has static, Noxus maybe isn't the worst, but yeah, see, he gets the gold here from losing, so even though he doesn't make the econ from winning, he still gets a gold. That's something I've never really thought about, but yeah, you can actually, like, be two gold, or, you know, like, one gold off of your, your threshold, and then if you win, you get the gold, and if you lose... You almost always get the gold unless you only take two damage and it doesn't bring you down to your next threshold. But my chair isn't creaking. It's because it's creaking a lot like in real life. But hopefully my mic doesn't pick that up. That'd be annoying. If if it's a creaky chair diff, I'm sorry. I, maybe I should like oil it up or something. This is a uh how old is this chair? Okay, let's let's focus on the game. Uh we've played the Noxus opener uh with the Sork, so just trying to play strongest board. I mean, will this really be another Noxus game? Um, he's scouting around the lobby, but a two times speed. Yeah, there's a few other people playing Noxus openers. It also might just be that he thinks Noxus is a very strong opener just because of the stats that it gives and like Samira and, um, I mean, it's great for killing units, right? Samira and, um, and Cassio are great at killing units. Uh, items drops wise, uh, I mean, you could go like BT and play into Noxus. Um, it's Invoker in here. He also is holding potential Ionia units. Um, okay. So, yeah, a lot of options. Oh, my God. On a two-loss streak here, he goes six. Wow. That's wild to me. And he is going to slam BT. Okay, BT locks him into either Noxus. I mean, for the most part, sort of locks him into either Noxus 
or Ionia, you don't really want to be playing BT uh, in uh, in the Azir comp, just because there's no unit that really loves it. Okay, and neither of his options are great, so he's going to take some extra items. Yeah, it's a Death Cap and Sword, potentially, or it could just be Gunblade. Gunblade is very strong. He opts to actually make the Death Cap, though, and hold on to the Sword. Interesting. Death Cap. Okay. So, I mean... Uh, you could, you could suboptimally use these items in Noxus, but yeah, I do think, uh, and I think that's what he's looking at as well, that like this definitely looks like it's an Ionia game based on his items. It just seems very, very hard for him to actually play Noxus from this spot. So he's going to play for uh, Ionia this game. 65 HP, 50 gold here. He could 3-5 it or 4-1 it with a lot of gold. Here's to see how he spends his gold. He also sees in his eardrop. I mean, it's not the best place to play this comp, but... Uh, you know, we're playing uh, Flex TFT because we're good at TFT. It, I imagine if um, if we randomly hit an Azir 2, we will just play Azir from this spot. Like, yeah, let's be real. So, yeah, this, this is something that I learned this patch is that, like, I thought the patch was, like, really bad. Uh, and, like, it's it's obviously, like, not the most flexible patch of all time. But, like, good players can still flex very well. Um, you know, I, I thought it was very inflexible, but I, I think I just have to say that uh, I was not right. Like, there's some... There's some definitely some flex stuff you can do. Like if I went to Anglo here, I'd always take Rod and just go Gunblade. Um, and like I'm definitely thinking about it here. And like Gunblade's not even bad. Like Static Shiv, uh, Static Shiv Death Cap Gunblade on like a Kaisa doesn't sound that bad. Ooh, there's a Yasuo. Is he gonna three five it here? How much does he roll here? Oh, now he has Yasuo pair. So I think rolling it is pretty good. And he has a Zero pair here. He's holding all of the options. Look at this. Uh, ooh, he has to he has to sell some stuff though. Oh, it's it's so tough, right? This is what makes this patch so hard, and honestly so good, right? Like, he's holding all of his options here. He can play Ionia, or he can play Azir. Both both are very doable. If he's playing Azir, then this becomes Gunblade. If not, then the Sword becomes Yasuo item, and the Rod becomes another Kaisa item. So well played so far. Uh, and now he gets now he gets the opportunity to hold Lux as well. Like, what do you sell to hold this Lux? This? You sell the, the Cassio? Uh, it, 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 of course, makes your board a bit weaker. Oh, he decides to sell a Karma. He sells two Karmas. Oh, and that's Yasuo. I, I think... I think you have to, you you just have to take the um, take the direction there. The fact that you have Yasuo to at this spot means that you are playing around Ionia and you are not going to play around Azir. Unless, I mean, imagine, imagine we hit Azir two in the next shot, and then we play Ionia Sharima. Like, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know how much of a comp that is. Uh, but yeah, I have to imagine. Yes, he's looking to angle out of the Azirs now. Uh, curious if he just sells his entire bench here to make econ because I I think most people probably would it looks like he's still staying open yeah i mean this is this is craziness but uh he can keep rolling at seven here and then you know if you hit a random azir two uh like there's lux there's jarvin oh my god it's so hard okay but kaisa two and we're done okay beautiful i mean i honestly would have really liked to see and he's still looking for last azir unit either uh zed or um or Jin. he has neither right now he's playing a giant swain on his board right now and he, he does get to make the Gunblade now. So, great. He also has another sword, which could just be Deathblade Yasuo. Um, I think Deathblade on Yasuo is fine. I think maybe he thinks he can find better, though. Go for, like, Edge of Night plus maybe IE or something. I don't know. We'll see. Well, in Comforts is not bad. Social Distancing is amazing. Uh, he did he has two extra item components. I don't know. I kind of like, because he has the extra item components, Well, in Comforts. This is a uh, Jeweled Lotus. But, uh... I don't know. Let's see what he takes here. I, I'd probably just take Well Earned. He rerolls it, rerolls everything and takes Challenger Crest. Okay. Challenger Crest is nice because it spikes the board really hard. Um where did he get that RFC? Does he always have RFC? Oh wait, does Challenger Prismatic give RFC? Oh, I guess it does. Oh, that's pretty sick. I don't think I've taken this augment before. He gives RFC. I mean, that's great, right? That's I I'm as I've said many times before, I am a huge proponent of RFC Isuo. I think that it is just busted. Oh my god, he has to challenger his Shen. Um, whatever, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think RFC is insane. He does have it in the middle of the board, which I think is actually like not great positioning wise. Um, but I mean, his board is so stabilized here. But I mean, beautiful, beautiful roll down, similar to um when uh when we were talking when I was watching the dish soap pod uh earlier a few days ago. Uh you stay open to multiple lines with these flexible items, right? Uh, if you hit a zero two, you can play around BT. It's not great, but like you know, he, he ends up hitting though like the the best possible line, uh, and he plays a six challenger variant. Uh, yeah, I really like this Yasuo positioning. Third from the left or third from the right allows him to snipe uh, the back corner uh, almost every time. 
All right, sorry about that. I got hit by an ad on Twitch. Hopefully I edited this section out. If I did, you guys better like the video for how much effort I put into it because I can't just straight upload the VOD now. I have to edit it and re-render it. So you guys are freaking welcome. Uh, and you know, you better uh, appreciate it. Uh, so what did I go for here? Because I really think Deathblade is fine in this circumstance. Just for a tier? Here. He also hits a Nasus too here that he was just holding on bench. But you can actually, whoa, whoa. Okay, he's gonna make Shojin Kaisa and then move the static, mm, of course, of course. Three actual damage items on your Kaisa and then you can remove and move the static shiver to Callista. That's beautiful. Um, really cool also to see the, the six challenger version of the comp. So many people, like myself included, uh, just watching this game, I think, oh, you know, I need to find six Ionia, where's my gen? But uh, he says, okay, well, I have a bunch of challengers. I don't have six Ionia. Let's just play the six challenger version of the board. I have Nasus, which can actually fit onto the board. Hits Nasus too, and then boom! All of a sudden, we have a tank in Nasus. So many games I've played rolling down, saying, "Oh my god, I can't find Shen too. This game sucks." He just says, "Up, oh, all good. I found Nasus too." Ah, uh, Flex Play is alive and well this patch, man. Honestly, honestly, like the more I watch good players play, I feel like this patch is actually like really good. And like the reason I thought the patch was bad is because I was garbage at the set. Ah, uh, man, I need to. Uh, I need a VOD review. I need a VOD review, like, two games for every one game I play. Because, like, literally just watching this VOD from Jazz Latte, the one prior to this, and the Dish Soap one, like, literally those are the only, these these VOD reviews on my YouTube channel are the only ones that I have done. Uh, and all of them have been, like, eye-opening to me. And these are just random VODs I'm picking from the channel. So imagine if I just VOD reviewed, like, 24-7. And, I mean, look at this. Look how stable his board is because he played flexibly. Uh, he gets Edge of Night onto his Yasuo, but he kept the opportunity to make IE which is really, really solid as well. Um, I do feel like like RFC, like this might be BT, or BT, uh, this, this might be BISCO actually. Um, it's a little bit low damage, but the, the problem, the, the only downside to RFC Yasuo is that he will run into the back line, and then if your front line dies, then people often aggro onto him. The nice thing is he has a really strong front line, so he doesn't even have to worry about that. But I mean, yeah, look at him. 65 HP when streaking. I mean, he's kind of down a silver augment combat wise so he's even streaking without that but i mean you know it's it's silver augment at the end of the day not the end of the world but i mean just a beautifully played game from jazz latte just really really a lot of unintuitive decisions uh, made holding on to those as years until he found the kaisa to um you know taking the challenger spat and playing the six challenger version of the board which ended up absolutely being strongest spikes you so hard in the moment playing the six challenger version of the board holding on to the nasus playing nasus here like ah my eyes opened to, to so many new lines in this comp that I was, I, I've i never played on my own. So really, really beautiful play from Jazz Latte so far. Let's see how he ends up capping out the board. Because what is level 9? Uh, I mean, you can play like an Ari onto this board. Um, maybe. Uh, like right now, he's actually playing this Rise on 8 um, and just playing 3 Ionia. Because uh, yeah, you can't actually get... I mean, you'd have to cut the Nasus to actually get to 6 Ionia, which doesn't sound worth it to me. Uh, he's probably going to lose to this board. This, uh, yeah, just another Ionia board, looks like. Uh, ooh, there's Ionia Spat, though, and that could allow you to play six Ionia. And Ionia Spat is really, really solid on that Callista that he has on board. So I think you'll always take this if you can. A yoink. Very good. Uh, it'll also help Callista proc the Static Shiv a lot faster. Uh, he's going to level here. Just get Warwick in. Another Juggernaut. Finds Gwen, too. Whoa! He puts the Ionia Spat on Nasus, actually, um, just because uh, he's, he's strong frontline. Okay, and now he's going to move them all. Oh, that's so... Okay, so we put Ionia Spat on Nasus because he wanted to remove the Nasus and put items onto Belveth. He, he was aiming from that spot to move items to Belveth because Belveth is one of the best holders of Ionia Spat in the game and one of the best holders of Challenger Spat in the game. Uh, so he knew he wanted to remove her Nasus. So he just puts them both on Nasus. That when he gets uh when when he gets that Belveth, he can remove her. And so now he removes, and boom, look at that. Now he's got the Challenger Ionia Belveth, which could absolutely do some work. He's also got a random scion on this board because he had an open slot. Uh, and so he's gonna play that. Ah, oh, just beautiful, beautiful comp building from Jazz Latte. I feel like every single round I watch this guy, he's doing some crazy beautiful stuff. Uh really goes to show why he hit rank one in North America. This is really consistent play, just just beautiful play. Like uh I don't know what to say, honestly. Uh, I like the Heimerdinger a lot on this board, actually. He took it out for one round, maybe because it was weaker before he gets the, uh, the turret upgrades and he didn't have enough gold. 
but he lacks healing reduction. He already has Shred, he doesn't really need that, but um, he, he definitely needs healing reduction. Um, I mean, depending on the rest of the matchups, but yeah. And there's Mechano Swarm. Nice, and a Heimerdinger pair. Goldenator is kind of meh. Another Mechano Swarm. He's going to take one Shrink Ray. Um, and then double Shrink Ray. Okay. Double Shrink Ray does actually... Oh, he doesn't have any um Armor Shred, right? Yeah. The double Shrink Ray actually feels really good. And the Mechano Swarm, I mean, one is the same as three. They all uh, heal and reduct the same amount, so it's fine. Uh, he's going to end up losing this fight, but I mean, look at his HP. He's still 37 HP, losing to Milk's board, but I mean, his, his board is so strong, and he's still got uh, a lot of upgrades left to hit. He could hit Belveth, too. He can hit Heimerdinger, too. He's actually rolling down, and he still can't find uh, a significant upgrade to the... I mean, I think this is his endgame board for sure. He's going to item remover, move items over to Rise. Loves the Nasus for fun. Um, okay. We're fighting Respectful Humbles, sort of capped uh, Shurima board. Um... Hopefully our board can beat this. Yeah, I mean, looks like it because I, I mean, Jazzalate put in so much more work than someone who just played a stream of Lux board and Milk lost. Now he gets Shroud from, was that from the, the Rise portal? Did it give him that component? My god. Um, but he gets Shroud, that's amazing. I mean, I would personally keep rolling here, but maybe he's just that much of a beast and he's actually flexing the Senna possibility as well. If he hit Senna 2 here, what would he have done? Oh my gosh. Is there something reasonable to cut? I mean, you could cut Belveth and move the items to Senna, I guess, but it seems potentially weaker. Ooh. Milk's board is white. Oh, but that's it, baby. That is it. And that is a first from Jazz Latte. Absolute dominating performance from Jazz Latte. This was a beautiful game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please like, comment, subscribe, check out my Twitch, and all my links down below. Thank you, thank you.